Well, I ran out of chloroform, so I'm going to make some more. I did a video on this before, but it was kind of crude, so I wanted to do a better one. On top of that, I need this for an upcoming experiment. In addition to that, we're going to purify it. Some information. Chloroform was first made in 1831 by Samuel Guthrie in the United States. In France, there was another gentleman who did it about the same time. It was known at the time as chloromethane. It wasn't until 1847 when James Simpson used chloroform on himself to determine its analgesic properties. It was known of already, but he kind of finalized it, and it was therefore used in the Civil War for injuries and for surgery. Chloroform is fairly dense. It comes in at around one and a half grams per centimeter squared, so about 50% more dense than water. It's also hydrophobic, and it's a nonpolar solvent. Its boiling point is 62.1 degrees Celsius or 142.2 degrees Fahrenheit. I did not know this, but in nature, chloroform is actually formed by some seaweed and fungi. Chloroform naturally breaks down in the presence of air between 55 and 620 days. That's what the literature says. It usually breaks down into phosgene, which is pretty toxic, but it can also break down into dichloromethane, formal chloride, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen chloride. This breakdown can be prevented with ethanol, which floats on the top, and it just simply blocks the air from getting to the chloroform. It's known to act energetically with aluminum and magnesium powders. It also reacts with sodium and lithium. The most common method to make chloroform, especially a DIY, is bleach mixed with acetone, but isopropyl alcohol and ethanol also work. It's just they don't give as great of a yield. Our reaction is as follows. This is the acetone mixed with the bleach. Sodium hypochlorite yields our chloroform, CHCl3, and sodium hydroxide, and sodium acetate, and quite a bit of a heat because it's exothermic. The materials we need are bleach, about 3.6 liters, which is an average container in the United States at around 7%. Acetone, 100 milliliters. We need sodium chloride, water, ethanol, as we discussed, and the calcium chloride for our distillation. The salt and water are going to be used to make a salt solution, and I'm going to do that by mixing 71 grams of sodium chloride iodine-free with 200 milliliters of water. In our methods, the first thing we're going to do is chill our bleach down to at least negative 2 degrees Celsius. I've got mine in the freezer right now. The next thing we're going to do is pour our acetone into our bleach while it's cold, it's exothermic, and shake this up really good. Once it's shaken up good, you already have your crude chloroform at the bottom here, and you're going to decant off the top of this enough so that you're left with just a little bit that can fit both the remaining liquid and the chloroform into your separatory funnel. In your separatory funnel, you want to drip out your chloroform on the bottom, toss the rest right here, dispose of it properly, and then clean this up. Once you clean up your separatory funnel, put your chloroform back in, and in comes a sodium chloride solution that you're going to mix by putting it in the same container and shaking this. Therefore, you're going to absorb out of the chloroform some water, most of it actually, and then any salts that are also mixed in there. So you have a pretty darn pure bit of chloroform at the bottom, and you're going to then drip that out very carefully so you only have that in a beaker right here. You're going to take your beaker then and put it, the chloroform in there in a round bottom flask, which is going to be used to distill it. There will be some calcium chloride in there to help absorb any water that might be left. We're going to look for a temperature around 62.1 degrees, and at that point, the chloroform will start to come over, which will be very pure. Anything after that, if the temperature starts to rise, there's probably some water coming over, so we'll have to stop it. Once we have our pure chloroform, we can put it in a nice container of some sort or a flask and add the ethanol on top so it creates this barrier to keep your chloroform pure and stop it from breaking down. Well, we don't want anything breaking down, so let's go ahead and make our chloroform and then purify it. We start making our chloroform by getting our bleach very cold. It's been in my freezer a couple days, which is set pretty cold. I didn't realize this when I pulled this out, but it's a solid block, so that's got to thaw. I took bleach from a different container and heated it up and poured it inside of here. You can still see there's ice on this, but believe it or not, it's liquid on the inside, except for a couple of small ice chunks. So because this is exothermic, I'm going to go ahead and do this. But what we need to do is pour out 100 milliliters of bleach. Like so, because we're going to put the acetone in there, of course. I'm going to measure out the 100 milliliters of acetone that we need. All right, next step is super simple. Pour the acetone into the bleach. Again, because this is exothermic, I expect it to completely melt anything that might still be inside of here. Tighten that up good and shake. 
as ice goes flying everywhere. So I'm going to let that set for a bit, shake it some more, let it set, and then eventually leave it overnight for 12 hours. It's not been five minutes and all of the ice has melted off of this and it is considerably warm to the touch. Very warm. You can see all the water down here from the ice. But um, I'll periodically shake and mix and open the top to release the air that gets pressurized in here. Um, no gas is being formed. It's just the expansion of the liquid pushes the uh, air against the side. So I just want to release that pressure. 200 milliliters of distilled water pre-measured. 71 grams of iodine-free sodium chloride pre-weighed. Here's our 200 milliliters of water. I'm going to turn on the stir, stir bar and we'll put in our 71 grams of salt slowly. So simple. All right, everything's dissolved. We'll turn this thing down and we still have to wait overnight for the um, reaction with the acetone and bleach to finish, but at least the salt solution is ready to go. It's the next day here. I haven't opened this in some time, so there might be a little bit of compressed air still. Yeah, just a little bit. But at this point, all of the core forms at the bottom, and I'm just going to decant what's on the top here as much as I can before I put it in the separatory funnel. Contained in here, of course, is the sodium acetate, some salt probably, and sodium hydroxide. Got to get rid of just over two, two and a half liters because the separatory funnel is a liter. Okay, actually, I'm going to go for a full liter here. I think we'll be okay. If for some reason, the S, I'm sorry, the chloroform ends up in here. I will pour it back in and we'll take out less. But I don't think it's going to. From on top here, you can see the funnel I put in the separatory funnel. And I use a little grease in the stopper there, some silicone grease. Here's the bleach that I'm going to be pouring in here next. All right, here we go. I'll be honest, that was pretty close. There's like 100 milliliters of room on the top. But it fit, and you can see our chloroform separating in the bottom there. It's heavier than everything else, and it's hydrophobic, so it wants to separate from the water. Next step is to very carefully let out just the chloroform. I'll be putting it immediately from this beaker into the... Uh, flask you see there just so we don't lose any to evaporation because it's got a cork here's our crude chloroform of course we're going to purify it next I'm going to discard all of this and then clean the separatory funnel and then we'll be back to wash the chloroform with the salt solution. The separatory funnel has been cleaned so I'm going to pour the chloroform back into it. I'm going to next pour this saturated salt solution in there. So I'm going to end up capping this here and shaking it. I decided to do this outside where there's more room. You can see the very slight demarcation there between the salt water on top and the chloroform on the bottom. But I'm out here to shake this really good. Okay, I'd say that's pretty good. It's got to separate again. Be back inside next. You can clearly see that the salt has done its job. It's absorbed water and other impurities, other salts, of course, and it's clouded up nicely. Down here is our even purer chloroform, but it's not quite pure as we can get it. It still needs to be distilled. Once again, just collecting the chloroform. Done. We're ready to distill here. Got my calcium chloride. I'm gonna put in an arbitrary amount. If you weighed it, I know what it looks like. It turns out to be about three grams or so. Next, we're going to pour in what turns out to be 100 milliliters of chloroform. Calcium chloride is just to help absorb any last water while it's actually being distilled, which, of course, itself will help remove any water. 
And lastly, I put some grease on this. I'm going to close this all up here and turn on the heat. I will be back periodically to check in on it. Our temperature is 26.9 degrees Celsius and we're shooting for around 62 degrees. The chloroform is just starting to boil and I've got my fume hood on, of course. There's a pretty vigorous boil going on with the chloroform right there. Um, this has not risen that much yet, just a couple degrees Celsius, but we're looking for that right temperature before it starts to drip over here. We've got the right temperature here, plus or minus the air of the thermometer. This is boiling aggressively. You can see the calcium chloride being left behind there on the, in a ring, and on this end, we're collecting our pure chloroform. Unlike other solids that get left behind, I'm not really worried about the calcium chloride. Its melting temperature is around 770 degrees Celsius, or around 1420 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and it's also very water soluble, so I should be able to rinse that out pretty easy, even though it's getting hardened. The temperature is staying right in the right range, even though there's almost nothing left down here, which means most of the water has already been taken out. Um, there might be a little bit left in the calcium chloride at the bottom here, so I'm going to leave a little smidge of um, liquid down here just to make sure that the water stays in there and doesn't come over here and keeps this pure. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. That's what we're going to leave behind right there. I found that you can spray isopropyl alcohol very lightly around your round bottom flask here and what it does is immediately brings down the temperature which it has done and you can see it stopped boiling now. Of course it stopped dripping on this end so I'm going to pour this into a flask here and we'll roughly measure how much we have. When it stops boiling you never know exactly because it's kind of crude but you can see there's a little bit left on the bottom here. So if there is any water left, it's going to be in here for sure, and it did not make it over to the other side. The temperature never went up high enough. I just wanted to show this to you. I'm going to now transfer the chloroform into this other flask, as I was saying. One thing you want to make sure of, and I did do this, is that the inside neck of the round bottom flask had some silicone grease on it. And you want to make sure you remove that so that as you're doing this right here, the chloroform doesn't drag that grease right into your second container. All right, there's a chloroform. If you look at this from the side, roughly measures around 80 milliliters, and we had almost 100 before we started anything else, including the salt water. So it looks like we lost about 15 to 16 milliliters through the salt water and using the distillation, which you would expect if you're getting water out of it. We might have lost some chloroform also, but we know what we have here is definitely pure. The last thing we want to do is add some ethanol to it, and I'm going to do this right now. As we said before, it floats on the top and protects your chloroform from breaking down into phosgene and other things, etc. So I'm just going to put in, measures out at two cc's in this dropper. I'm not even going to put all that in. I'm going to just put in about one and a half. There we go. Squirt the rest back in there. All right. Now we can stop her at and put it into another bottle if we want. But we're done making our chloroform.